impressive, Kratos. I'm pleased to provide a challenge, Kratos. Honor me with another sparring match. I brought something else to keep things interesting. You're not the only one. Hey, uh, don't get distracted. I was wondering, actually, did Odin ever try his hand at Valhalla? Of course. He explored it very thoroughly in seeking to gain... Why did you pledge yourself to Ares? I was ambitious. Long to a boat captain I met during the Babylon in Jinzi. His ship was part of a fleet under attack by a Hydra. Genuinely hard to think of anything stupider than pledging your soul to Ares of all people. I mean, any of Zeus's brood are bound to be garbage, present company by no means excluded. But Ares made a real art out of being vicious and depraved. Though, I suppose I can't begrudge you your role model. I see you still use the blade. Can you really say you regret a decision and still keep benefiting from the trappings of that decision? I'm not sure, I'm just asking. You ever try to do the math on how many people died as a result of your little collaboration? Like contemplating the grains of sand on a beach, isn't it? Just overwhelming, honestly. <laughs> Looks like someone left you a party favor. Oh, and it's a symbolic totem of your shame. That's so thoughtful. Ah, now you've done it. You're being judged. And we all know your past actions wouldn't pass muster with anybody. Oh, I meant to ask. How did you like setting yourself on fire? Truly entertaining stuff. Sorry to miss how it ended up. I think maybe you still have some ash on your skin. Am I crazy? 
Siren? Cover my ears! Kratos! Is that a key? One from my past. Did it unlock something important? Only a memory. Seems Valhalla thinks you have a story to tell. Later. Greetings, friend. Any questions before you get started? I was wondering, actually. Did Odin ever try his hand at Valhalla? Of course. He explored it very thoroughly in seeking to gain control of the Valkyries. But in the end, he found nothing here he could use. You see, Odin always looked outside himself. But Valhalla only reveals its secrets to those who do the work of looking within. Sigmund has been important to you for as long as I have known you. What happened in the beginning? Oh, it's a typical enough story. A boy meets girl. Girl fulfills her ambition to transcend the physical plane and become a Valkyrie of Valhalla. One day, Sigrid quietly arrived from Fjordalund and began serving as Freya's handmaiden while she undertook training for the Sisterhood. I don't even think we were introduced. I just see her around the court. Of course, I observed her loveliness and impressive stature long before we fell to talking. But we seem cut from different cloth, I suppose. Never occurred to me we'd get along as well as we did. Kratos, the key you found. Whose was it? What did it unlock? It belonged to a boat captain I met during a battle on the Aegean Sea. His ship was part of a fleet under attack by a Hydra. 
The key unlocked his quarters, where I heard women screaming for help. Ah, yes. The story of your fight with the free-headed sea serpent. You impaled one of its heads on the ship's mast, was it? Yes. But that battle is not why this key appeared. It is my killing of the boat captain for it. That seems to follow me wherever I go. Might want to pick up the pace. Unless you want everything to get more <laughs> difficult. Brother. Welcome, Kratos. Honor me with another sparring match. I brought something else to keep things interesting. You're not the only one with weapons from far off lands, you know. Ready? Blood for 
destroy them before they reach Tiar. Why did you do it, Kratos? Why did you pledge yourself to Ares? I was ambitious. Wrong. I could not accept defeat. I crave power. Is that all? Are you sure? Nothing more to that story? Nothing else under the surface? There's the fire! Good, Kratos! Always impressive, Kratos. I'm pleased to provide a challenge, Kratos. The key again. More to the story? Yes. When there is time. How was it you first spoke? Back when Freya was queen in Asgard, the better times, I mean, there really began to be some culture around the place. Poets, musicians, the odd contortionist would pay visits, perform, mingle. On one occasion, I'd taken a seat expecting to see this ballad here of the lowlands, when Sigrun walked in. Somehow more stunning than I'd ever seen her. And when of all places she chose to sit next to me, well, a lot of very interesting things happened very quickly. But I may need to collect my thoughts while you get us killed again. Let us get back to your memories of Sigrun. She sat beside you. Yes, she chose to sit next to me. No friend thing, really. Yet, somehow, despite myself, I felt a rush in my stomach like I was a green lad again. Embarrassing at the end of the day, it's so simple. I made some remark, and I learned how it felt to make her laugh. And suddenly I felt more at ease. Almost eerily so. A calm within each other's storms, I suppose. They had a way of describing that. Peace dwells among us. Lovely, brother. That's exactly right. Romir, what happened next with Sigrun? She had introduced me as a good friend. And though I couldn't be entirely sure what she meant by it, for once I wasn't concerned with an outcome. Regarding Sigrun, I knew my answer was yes. The question itself seemed secondary. You were not upset she called you friend. Show me someone for whom friendship means lack of love. And I'll show you someone who wonders why their lovers never end up being worth the time. Perhaps. But you did not express your feelings. Oh. I don't think she could have escaped noticing them. I just never asked her anything I felt sure she'd have to refuse. Your relationship with Sigrid. Why so reluctant to tell her how you felt? She was on the Valkyrie's path. Preparing to transcend her corporeal form. That was her focus, her chosen purpose. And I didn't want to suggest myself as an obstacle. I suppose I let some part of myself imagine she might recognize my affection, even reciprocate it. But now that we know what she was running from, obviously she'd never again risk choosing love over duty. A unique heartfelt friendship, that is what could endure. That is what I chose to embrace. <clears throat> if you remember, I had shunned my father's herbal medicine after it failed to save him. I left my village and moved to the city. I scraped and scrounged, managed to survive, and became an apprentice to a renowned mage healer. I soaked up everything I could from her, and I was a natural, it turns out. Shutting my father's legacy came easy. In fact, I'd acquired quite the distaste for it. I cut herbal medicine out of my life completely. It was this rigidness that would prove the biggest mistake of my life. Kratos, about this boat, Captain. If you needed his key to save others, why does it seem to bother you so? 
Your actions in this case seem justified. The captain was followed by the Hydra before I was able to kill it. When I entered its maw to retrieve the key, the captain had somehow survived, dangling over a fall that would surely kill him. I saw the terror in his eyes as he fought to hold on, and in relief when he believed I would save him. Instead, I took the key and dropped him to his death. And it was all for nothing. The women were dead by the time I reached them. Brother, you've told me many times of mortals you killed when in the gods' service. What is it about this boat, Captain? It would have cost me nothing to show him mercy. His life was in my hands. To be so casually cruel, I... This man did nothing to me, and I treated his life as nothing. He was not a god who had manipulated me nor bound to service. I cannot hide behind my thirst for revenge. He was just a man afraid for his life. Attacked and swallowed by a monster he had no hope of defeating. But the Hydra was just an animal. Sorry, Gosh. brother, but maybe we reserve our talks for sleep. Oh, hello, brother. I'm back. Good to see you again, Kratos. Those who have fallen, carry me! Brother, destroy them before they reach the act. Do you remember our last conversation here? You implied there was more to my deal with Ares than mere lust for power. Indeed. We are seldom compelled by singular drives. There is always more to the story.
I yield, Kratos. Very well. I believe you found an understanding within yourself. Shall we see? The pools. It's not only memories. Indeed. For what is a memory apart from our perspective on it? You know the evils that came of your pact. You know the evils within yourself. Yes, these you dwell on. But it's not that simple, is it? The haunt is vast, brother. What would have happened if you didn't stop it? Our lands would have been overrun. Our people killed, violated. People your army was sworn to protect. An army led by you. Did you not feel a duty to fulfill your purpose? Did you not fear for the safety of your homeland? You saved them. You would excuse my actions. Excusing them is not the exercise, Kratos. Only accepting them. Accepting that you acted based on what you knew then, not on what was to come. Your motivation and their consequences are far more complicated than you let yourself believe. Hmm. I think perhaps you have more to process. Yes. I have much to think about. I will return. And I will be waiting.